well, yesterday afternoon I was um, playing with my old original Commodore 64, an old bread bin, and uh, <clears throat> I've been using this power supply on that computer for, well, since the mid 80s when I got it. And I know these things are um, called, you know, power bricks of death or whatever, but uh, I thought, no, this one seems reliable. It's a simple um, linear power supply. It's got two outputs. It's got a 9-volt AC. There's the secondary windings for the 9-volt AC there. And then it's a center-tapped uh, windings here, which go to a bit of a rectifier bridge there. It's not a full-way rectifier because you don't need that with a center-tapped transformer. And then straight into a um, three-terminal regulator there. I thought, oh, well, it's simple enough. I'll keep using it. But anyway... Yesterday the smoke came out and it's probably good that it died the way it did. It looks like both those rectified diodes are going short circuit. So hopefully I didn't um, apply any uh, voltages on the 64 to damage it. So uh, these things have been responsible for house fires and all sorts of things over the years. They're, they're famous for it, infamous. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the um, original transformer for the 9 volt output. And I bought one of these things from JCAR. So this is a <clears throat> little switch mode power supply for 5 volts. Uh, 3 amps output, 240 volts in. And this thing should be uh, reliable. And if it does fail, I think switch mode power supplies generally fail um, sort of open. So there's no voltage. Where these things, with the linear regulators, anything could happen. And you could get, you know, 12 volts AC or something on the, um, on the 5 volt rail, which will kill precious chips that you can't buy anymore inside a 64. Well, you can buy them, but they're expensive. Um, Alright, so I'm going to try this. Uh, this is overrated, so this will be a 3 amp. This is originally a 1.5 amp at the 5 volt rail, so this should run all sorts of things, including, say, a Commodore 128 when I finally um, get one of those going. But anyway, that's the, the thing. Hopefully, I can make it look like an original power supply, but have modern um, switch mode power supply electronics inside it, and uh, this will be bulletproof from then on in. I won't destroy any Commodore 64s. Just testing the transformer. Like I said, I'm going to use the um, the, AC, the 9 volts AC output of the transformer as is, because I think the transformer is pretty rugged. You know, not much to go wrong there, and it's probably okay. Get a bit of glare off there. It says it's reading about 10 volts, but on the low that'll come down. So I reckon that's good. I'll use that. I've already had a bit of a look at the um, switch mode power supply for the 5 volt rail. It looks like it'll fit. So see if I can shoehorn all that together. Okay, there it is all together. I think it's going to be a goer. Um, <laughs> it only just barely fits. In fact, it's so tight that I couldn't even use this little cover here. But what uh, was a bit of good luck. I don't know if you can see there. There's a, a ridge there. And that's going to be perfect to separate the, um, the uh, switch mode power supply from the transformer there. Uh, I've also changed the power, the, the um, 240 volt side. So this had an earth lug. So I've decided to use um, <clears throat> a three-wire plug um, and earth that because it had there, and I thought, oh, why not? And uh, yeah, it just fits together, so I think it's going to be good. Next is to uh, triple check that all the voltages are right on the right pins on the computer side, on the C64 side, and then I'll take it in and plug it into a, a real C64 and see if it boots. Okay. Okay, always the scariest bit, putting on the mains for the first time. Here we go, hopefully nothing goes bang. We're looking for that 9 or 10 volts or whatever it was on that uh, multimeter there. Here we go. There we go. The AC side's right, so I'm just probing the AC pins there. Uh, Alright, I'll turn this off and do the 5 volts. It's got a um, trim pot adjuster for 5 volts too, so I'll set it spot on. I won't go high, like some people do. Um, might be able to save a SID chip by keep them low. Alright, here we go. Alright, here we go again for the 5 volt rail. Bit sketchy um, probing those because the pins are right next to each other, but here we go. Yeah, that shows nothing. Alright, what have I got wrong? Do a take two on that. All right, looks like I had the pinouts wrong. I was looking at a mirror image, looking at the female side, not the male side, or something like that. So here we go again. And what do we got? Oh, spot on five volts. There we go, ready to go. I'll put it together, and uh, 
Oh yeah, and of course the polarity is correct. I don't have a minus sign in front of that number there, which is probably the most important thing here. Uh, all right, I'll put it back together and see uh, see how it goes on a real machine. Okay, I'm going to test it on the uh, 64 that it was attached to when the smoke came out. So hopefully it didn't die with a high voltage or something on the 5 volt rail. So here we go, I'm going to flick the switch. Fingers crossed. And it's alive. There you go. That's what we want to see. Alright, that's a success. That power supply should outlast the computer probably. But anyway... That's exactly what you want to see when you um, turn these things on. Not a black screen or anything. There we go. Awesome.